Hey, you're right guys, Paul here, Old Man Medicine, coming to you from Cave Mark 4. I literally just looked in the viewfinder and realised I still have a hat on, but fuck it. We're going with it. <laughs> God, I look ridiculous, but how, uh, you know, hair will be all messed up, won't it? <laughs> so, yeah guys, um, another FAQ video because a lot of the time I get these questions a lot so clearly I haven't answered them or if I have it's buried away somewhere so let's answer them shall we the first question is essentially how do I keep motivated you know I get this question uh, quite a lot in various forms but essentially how do I stay motivated with everything that's going on in the world with my personal situation around finance and all that good stuff that um, always seem to be it's never easy, but, you know, so people ask, well, I'd stay motivated. Motivation is one of those things that's inherently quite personal. Some people are motivated by money. Some people are motivated by fame. Some people are motivated by, I don't know, the chance to have an easy life. Me, like, I don't actually know really what motivates me other than just the desire to be a doctor more than anything else. Like, money and all that doesn't bother me like obviously I want to get well paid you know more money the better you know to get paid but you know, I've I've had minimum wage jobs in my life you know I've lived on minimum wage and it sucks so as long as I know I know being a doctor I have enough money to live so money is not a motivating factor I think it's just that of all the things in my life I've come to realize it comes to realize that certain things that very few people will ever have. And that is, I think, genuinely a job that people genuinely like. I think that's the most important thing in the world. I know people making a lot of money, people who I've met in my life who in some cases have, are in businesses or have businesses that some of them are making seven, eight, nine figures that a lot of them aren't happy because they, they don't like their jobs. Like money's all well and good, but having a job you like is just the rarest thing as far as I've come to understand. And same here, like I could have, with my background and my, re and my re with my research background and my clinical experience, I could have gone and got a job, you know, working for a drug company, working for Pfizer, doing something that I didn't like that would probably pay me three times what I was on. I'd be on really good money. But, it's the same with studying, like if I'm not interested in something, I really struggle to do it. With medicine, I always find myself interested in everything, so I enjoy studying. Like I study when I don't need to because I genuinely enjoy it. So for me, motivation is like, I think being a doctor is an amazing thing. You know, it sounds, it looks like the best job in the world you know, interesting variety, you know, obviously it's well paid and good pension and all that stuff, but it seems to play to my strengths. And yeah, I think that's it. Like if any job, no matter what it is, if it, if you like it, then you're doing better than about 90% of the people on this spinning rock. Like generally, I believe that. So basically, how do I stay motivated? Because genuinely, like, I want to be a doctor really, really badly. Not for money, not for fame, not for anything more than just it just the job. Like I've seen what the job's like, you know, I've, I haven't done the job, but I've seen what the job's like, I've seen what it involves, and it just looks it just looks great to me. From the obviously sitting here on the outside is all well and good, but what keeps me motivated is like I wanna see if I can do it. You know, it looks like the best job in the world. I wanna see if I can be a good doctor. And yeah, that's how I stay motivated right now. Like, but motivations change. Like, if you're 25 years old and you've just qualified or you're 23 years old, you might be motivated by career and all that good stuff. But then 10 years later, you might be motivated by, oh, I just wanna have a good job, live my life with my partner and my kids and my white picket fence. So. Right now, the motivation for me is just purely, I want to be a doctor just to see if I can do that, see if I'll be good at it, and because I generally think it might be the best job ever. 
Another question I get a lot is around time management, poor with lectures and placements and work and all this stuff. How do you manage your time? Time management is not difficult because if you're doing time management for just yourself, it's not actually that hard. Like doing time management for a group of people or a project, that's difficult. But for me, it's just, it's just me. Like I've only got to worry about me and what's works well for me might not work well for you but you just have to be honest with yourself like right I need to do this 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 and this what's the best way to get myself to do it some people make lists some people have post-it notes some people have a good old-fashioned whiteboard you know plenty of people that buy whiteboards and then just I know some people that plan their days down to the 30 minute block I know some people that literally will have a list of things to do in a week. And what you have to do is essentially experiment. I've come to realize that time management isn't particularly a strong point of mine. But I have a very good knack of finishing lists, to-do lists. So I don't plan my days out. Like I've got that week to two pages diary, well, not the same one, but there's the same diary for the for this coming year. And I write on the diary every day the stuff I have to do, but with no times involved. Because I found that if I put times in there, it never be fucks up. So I will put what I have to do within a calendar day. And that's it. Unless, you know, obviously if I've got an appointment for to see the doctor, then I write that in. But if I've got to do a PowerPoint or call somebody or do something like that, I will just write it on the list, but not put any time, not how long it takes or anything like that. Because I found that if I try and say, I'll do this at nine, nine till 11 and this like 11 till one, I inevitably won't do that. It'll, something will come up on that. So rather than, especially for studying, I found that allotting time for studying is a bit of a fruitless task a lot of the time because you're concerned, you're just, if you say, I need to do four hours of studying today, I'm going to do it from 11 to 1 and then from 4.30 to 6.30. And I'm going to study cardiac. So you've got those four hours. You've all, blo all nicely blocked in. That's all well and good. And you're going to spend half of that doing busy work to click the time down. Because subconsciously, that's what you'll do. Like you make busy work for yourself. But what I found when it comes to things like studying is to not be nebulous. Say, I'm going to read all of chapter six and seven, make notes on it. And then I'm going to do this many flashcards and this many questions off Amboss. By thing is like, if you keep your, the, if you keep your target blurry, you don't know if you hit or miss. And people deliberately do that by saying, I'm going to study cardiac for five hours today. It's nebulous because sitting at your computer watching Amboss videos or, um, you know, reading some stuff is technically studying. It is. It's not the best studying, but you're doing studying and it's busy work for yourself. Because like I said, if you keep it nebulous, you don't know if you miss. So, best things I can do for time management is work out what works for you. For me, I don't put any times on almost anything. Like not study for an hour, not study for five hours, nothing like that. Put on like this many questions. I need to do this. I need to write this stuff that's very quantif that's very sort of quantifiable and very fixed. Because in theory, you could watch four hours of osmosis videos on cardiac from everything from the meds there, and there's loads on there. And that's technically you've done four hours of studying, but you've essentially just sat there watching it while flicking through TikTok. Like, that's it for time management. I would say work out, like, I'm the paper and pencil over there, and I've got a notebook there. Like, that's what works best for me. Some people are like Google calendars and all manner of like productivity apps that work great for them. I've tried a lot of them. They just don't fly with me. It just doesn't work with me, but that's not to say they're not a great thing. You just don't stick with one. I would just try one, try it for a month. 
If you think, oh, I'm not sure about this, then go on to something else. Just keep trying things and you'll find out what works for you. It comes evident quite quickly if you're analog or digital, if you like something that's you know, you can sort of micro down on, like where, every, you know, natural language processing and all that good stuff, or not, like you work it out. Like, so that's what I would say, just try a system. If you don't think it's working, try another system, just steal it off other people, you know? watch whatever Tom Frank or Ali Abdal or whoever, like watch what they've done, give it a try. And obviously don't, you know, you might have to buy some apps or something, but give it a crack. Because if it works for you, great, then you've got your thing. But don't just pick the one that looks to be the most efficient and just stick with it. Because if it doesn't work for you, then it's still not fucking working, is it? Another question I get a lot is around social life. Um, can you have a social life in medical school? Can I have a social life given my situation the answer is virtually yes you should definitely have a social life you know if you've got a husband and three kids and a mortgage and you're doing medical school as well you might not be able to do it but for most people you can have some semblance of a social life if you're organized with your time management you can get everything done to give yourself enough time off to have a social life you can you don't need to live and die on the hill of medical school because it just won't work out. You know, you need work-life balance, like doing sprints of grafting hard, like say you're American, you need to do step one, stuff like that. That's different. But over the years and years and years of medical school, three, four, five, six years of medical school, you need a social life. Because, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have a social life in the summers because I had to work, but that's only for 10 weeks. That's just a sprint that you have to do. So you can, if you're organized, and also it makes everything a bit easier, give yourself something to look forward to. You know, it's, it's easy to study hard when you know that Wednesday night, you're gonna go out for burger and beers with the guys. I mean, that's it. It's like social life is a kind of a, it's a necessity thing, but it also feels like a reward thing. It feels like, oh, I should be studying. Like, no, you shouldn't be because studying, you know, all day, every day that you're not asleep is inefficient. Like your body just can't keep up with that. So scheduling downtime for you to sort of rest, regenerate, is important so social life is that because you you know you're sitting around in weather spoons talking shit is probably good for you because you're not thinking about the fucking whatever part of medicine you're doing at the moment and that's good you know let your mind go off onto something else like it's it's very it's incredibly beneficial i believe and i'm sure the evidence backs it up like more isn't necessarily better when it comes to studying i'm a firm believer in quality over quantity. I mean, sometimes you need to go hard, like just before your exam period, you know, make sure you've studied up to it, but you know, two weeks before your big final exam, you're gonna be going really, really hard because you're just trying, it's like a fight camp. You're trying to peak at the right time, but you don't do that. Like, I've used the analogy before, like boxers go into camp, boxers, MMA fighters, whatever, go into camp to get themselves so they peak at just the right time. You can't keep, you can't stay in camp 52 weeks of the year because your body will break down, you'll overtrain, and it's the same with thinking and medical school and all that you need to schedule breaks, take half days off for your mental health and just so you become better at it. Like you can't train hard all the time, you'll injure yourself. You need to schedule down types, schedule deloads, do all of that good stuff. So yeah, you need a social life and medical school isn't, isn't that, it's, it's hard and there's a lot of it, but if you're re even if you're reasonably well organized, I would say even if you're badly organized, you can still organize some time off to have a social life, guarantee it. Recently, I've got this question a few times because I talk about trying to get the most out of your placements, which is obviously what everybody wants to do. But, uh, you know, if somebody emailed me going, that's a bit of a nebulous statement. Like, how do you do that? And that is a very reasonable question to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think I explain myself very well, but getting the most out of placement, 
a lot of it I think comes down to your attitude. You've got to have a can do and will do attitude. Like not every day is going to be brilliant on placement. You're going to have some days that are bullshit because you know, maybe you're with somebody who's just not interested in teaching you and basically wants you to walk around behind them all day. It happens. Like, but where, where you see opportunities, you've got to take it. And sometimes what, like I, we've, I, when I doing ED, like the shifts where I believe one of the medical students spent all day putting cannulas in because genuinely there was nothing work. There was nothing much going on anywhere. Like patients to see were very few and far between. And he decided that, you know what, I'm just going to put everyone's cannulas in for them. And he did, he put loads of cannulas in all day. And he said out at the end of it, he's like, I feel like I'm better at cannulas. I was like, well, that's it. It's like you saw an opportunity to try and get something out of what for a lot of people would have, like a lot of medical students would have just fucked the day off. Because you can, like you can basically say, oh yeah, yeah, I've got teaching or I've got some reason and you can just go a lot of the time. Like providing you're there and you're there for a, quite a while, like you can leave. So I think a lot of people did that, but he like, I stayed to try and like, just do stuff. And he did the same and he got something out of it because he's like, you know what, just do whatever you can with whatever you're given on any given day and you get the best out of your placement. If, you know, all you can do is obs on patients all day because of just a shitty set of circumstances, just do it, just do that. That's the attitude that can do attitude that's the and also will do if somebody asks like do people favors do stuff that you don't want to do to help other people out one you know like i said even as a medical student you're part of the team and you need to treat yourself like that if you want people to treat you like a team member or a colleague or what however you want to say it like you have to act like it as well you know Go to the storeroom and get a box of bedpans that, you know, a nurse needs, a, like, don't come up with, because there's obviously a thousand excuses you can make to not do something. But yeah, do that. Be the person that helps out because it, one, it ingratiates you and two, you'll feel more like part of the team because you are, you're here for the patients and you're here to learn. And if there's nothing to do for you right there and then, then you can help people. You help you help the colleagues out and then they'll probably help you out later on because they'll be like, oh, Paul, he's always, you know, if I, if I need a hand to move a patient or I need a hand, oh, Paul, can you grab me a bed sheet? If, you, if you're helpful to them, they'll be helpful to you. It's not how it should be, but it's just how it is. And that's just how what you need to remember that. To so get the most out of your placement, always be working, always be looking for work because there's stuff to be learned. You've just got to say like, I know that this person just needs their blood pressure taken. And I know it's an inane task, but there's got to be something you can get out of every interaction. You can, because everyone's got a problem. Everybody's got a history. There's always something you can be doing and that's how you've got to be thinking. Now it might be, you know, you literally need to go, oh, can you go and check bed six's sats? Because he's had a neb and it's 20 minutes later, can you check his sats? Yeah, go and do that. Go and check his sats. And maybe he can't, maybe you can't get anything out of him for whatever reason, he doesn't speak English or whatever. Go take his sats, but while you're there, you're like, what can I learn? Like, look at this guy. What's he looking like right now? Check his notes. You know, just, just a chance to learn stuff out of here. Just look at him and say, what do you think's going on? Just using the end of bedogram. You know, just, you've just looked at this guy, you've checked his sats, you've gone out, you're like, what do I think might be wrong with this guy? Just blindly. And then check the notes. Like, there's always stuff you can try and learn, you know, and it's hard to sort of be this proactive all the time, but it's worth it. So getting the most out of your placement is be the, you know, be the sort of can-do person, you know, try and get the most out of everything and help everybody out and just always be looking for stuff to learn because it's all out there. If you're in an A&E department, there could be 50, 60, 100 people in the department. 
and there's you telling me there's nothing you can learn from all those patients and all those staff you know there's no reason you can't go and ask somebody a question about what they're doing if you're somebody's looking at a ct look over their shoulder you know and you know providing you're not you know interrupting i'm sure if you had a quick look maybe ask them say oh it looks like a renal stone you go oh, actually no that's not a renal stone it's this 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 and like there you go you can learn something so that's it that's how you get that's how in my opinion you get the most out of placement and the last one which was a bit of a weird question but i kind of liked it to be honest was around boredom or do you not get bored of studying working and sleeping no i don't because one i enjoy what i'm doing in terms of medical school and also it's easy to live this life when you see what's at the end like could i live this life forever absolutely not i would mentally explode but as the years go count down and i get closer to qualifying it becomes easier in a way because you're looking at the end goal that's all it's about and yeah it can get a bit monotonous and a bit repetitive but that's why you need things like a social life and hobbies it's the little treats that make it all worthwhile the case in point is when i lived in ukraine for two two and a half years i had two meals a day the same two meals a day for two and a half years and i never got and i carried on and it was fine did I get bored of it? Yeah. But living like that gave me enough spare cash that every now and again I could go out to dogs and burgers. I could go and get a pizza from a shop, one of the lovely, lovely Ukrainian pizza stack. Then you go to the back of bloody whatever, Varus, and the pizzas are already in boxes and stacks. They were a couple of quid each. But I ate the same thing every day because it gave me enough money to have these treats and those treats meant that I could carry on. And that's it around boredom. It's like, yeah, it gets tiresome doing studying so much, but you know, the nights out with your friends, you're going rock climbing if that's your thing, like your hobbies, the treating yourself to doing your hobbies just kind of alleviates that. It's easy to stay on that diet that I did because you know full well that doing this means that, you know, this Thursday, man, I'm gonna have three triple cheeseburgers, some onion rings, some fries, and, you know, some beer. And all I have to do is carry on eating the same thing. Yeah, it's a bit tedious. But you're doing that because the outcome, because that way I can get through medical school. That way, if I eat like this, you know, I could have ate slightly better but I couldn't have afforded the takeaways. And then I would have got bored because it's all right to eat the same thing all the time. It's where you're punctuating it with the good stuff and that's what keeps you going. Like, and medical school is one of those where you can fall into ruts, but it's the little things that stop you getting bored. Like, yeah, you're gonna get bored of reading. You're gonna get bored, like it happens. But it's the little little nuggets of fun that you intersperse in that means that you can carry on. And also it's the end goal. Like it's easy to study a ridiculous amount of hours for, for weeks and weeks for your final exams. When I sit croc too, and I've spent a solid month studying for it and doing probably nothing else, it'd be easy to do it because you just look at how close the goal is. And that's it. It's like, it's not a matter of motivation a lot of the time. It's a matter of discipline because you know that discipline will get you through. Like I've said it before and my man Willink says it every day, like discipline equals freedom. Like you've got discipline, you've got more time. Like if you can hammer your to-do list every day and be done by 4.30, then from 4.30 then your time is your own. You can spend your time watching cat videos on YouTube. You can spend your time, I don't know, doing whatever you want because you've done everything. And that's what um, discipline does that for you. And having more free time to do what you want will mean you're less likely to get bored. So that's another reason to just keep with it. Anyway, 
that's it guys like I've hammered on long enough about these things and yeah just more FAQs and you know hopefully you get something out of it but anyway I'll let you guys get back to it stay sharp be safe Paul old man medicine see you guys in the next one peace